I love how PC handhelds let me play virtually anything that I want wherever I want. If I get a game on Steam or GOG or, I don't know, Ubisoft Connect, I can play it on my PC or any plethora of handhelds that I have. It's awesome. What sucks is Windows. It is not at all meant to be navigated by a controller or even a touchscreen. The desktop experience in a handheld form factor is just abysmal. Because of this, whenever a company makes a PC handheld, they have to then make a launcher for that PC handheld. Something that will make navigating Windows with a controller much less of a hassle. Valve does a great job of this with SteamOS. But we're not gonna talk about SteamOS in this video. This is mostly for Windows handhelds. I actually don't hate Armory Crate. It does a pretty decent job of automatically finding and adding your games library. Some more customization would be better, but this is essentially what we're looking for. Some sort of solution that lays over Windows, hiding it and making it infinitely easier to launch your games. You can still get into Windows if you need to because Windows is still there. It's just hiding a bit. We wanna be able to preserve that Windows functionality because it's important to sometimes access that Windows environment to do certain things. Some people go the extra mile and take their Windows handhelds and turn it into a full-on desktop replacement. These devices aren't always the best to use as a computer. Believe me, I've tried. If you intend to dock it, do homework on it, or play mouse and keyboard games, I'd highly recommend just getting a laptop. And honestly, there's some pretty decently cheap laptops out there these days that pack a punch. I got this one right here from this video sponsor, Best Buy. It's the Lenovo LOQ Gaming Laptop with an AMD Ryzen 5 and an NVIDIA 3050 GPU. The specs might be a little modest, but so is the price. It's about the same as these handhelds, and you get a solid 1080p, 144 hertz display, which is perfect for competitive online play. I'm honestly very surprised by the performance of this budget laptop. And if those specs aren't good enough for you, you can step it up for just a few dollars more to the Ryzen 7 NVIDIA 4060 version. Actually, at the time of recording right now, that one is on sale for cheaper. Still a great value though. There's still a great place in this world for gaming handhelds, but if you need something to do your taxes on too, get something that's just as affordable and just as powerful, but with a keyboard, please. So the Asus ROG Ally X. More, tell me more. G give me, g tell me more stuff I could buy, give me. Can I tell you later? I'm in the middle of a video. No, tell me now. The check cleared from my car accident. I wanna buy things. All right, well, I've also got this Xbox Series X one terabyte all digital console. Yay! Oh, my bad. I'm okay. This is the brand new Xbox Series X one terabyte digital in robotic white. The same Xbox Series X with quick resume, lightning fast load times, and up to 4K 120 frames per second gameplay. Pair this with Xbox Game Pass Ultimate for the smoothest all digital experience. And you get the new Call of Duty Black Ops 6 on Game Pass and play it right on here digitally day one. So anyway. Yeah, I beat it. Huh? I beat the game, I beat COD Zombies. You beat the game already? Yeah, I beat all the zombies. What do you mean all the zombies? all the zombies. Black Ops 1, Black Ops 2, Black Ops 3, Black Ops 4, Black Ops 5, Plans vs. Zombies, Black Ops 6. All right! This Scuf Nomad wireless gaming controller for iPhone has two rear paddles, Hall Effect thumbsticks that prolong the life of the sticks, and an ergonomic shape that fits naturally in your hands. Adjust the thumbsticks with a subscription-free app. Play any controller supported game for 16 hours. You don't even need to take off the case to use it. Okay, I beat it. What? I beat the game, I beat Call Mobile. All right, so why don't you go to Best Buy and take a look at their big selection of gaming. I want, I want something now, give it to me, give me something now. They got pick up in store. I, I Bring it to me, I want things brought to me, bring it. They got really good delivery. Some of this stuff came next day. Oh, okay. All right, I'll take this laptop though. Wait, I need that for the video. Shop deals all holiday season, plus new door busters every Friday at Best Buy. Anyway. Lenovo has something similar to Asus's Armory Crate on the Lenovo Legion Go, but for whatever reason, I don't like it as much. On my Lenovo Legion Go, I have it set to open up Steam in big picture mode right when Windows starts, which is extremely easy to do. First, go to Settings, Interface, and check Run Steam when computer starts. This is usually on by default when you download Steam. The very next checkbox under that is Start Steam in Big Picture Mode. This is how I have both my Lenovo Legion Go and my home theater PC set up. 
It's just the easiest way to get a simple front end on your Windows device that's easy to navigate with basically any input device. If you're skeptical of this because you have some games that aren't Steam games, you can very easily add those games to Steam. This is my recommendation for most people in most circumstances because of how easy it is. But we're gonna take this one step further. Maybe you have MUDEC set up on your Windows handheld. This usually installs Emulation Station as your emulation front end for all of your ROMs. This is probably my favorite front end for emulation because it has all my games laid out by system with nice little icons for each system. Just the way I like it. There is room for customization, but this is the easiest way to get the look that I personally want by default. But did you know that you can use Emulation Station to launch desktop games and apps, not just your ROMs? When you go through the whole EmuDeck setup, it creates a ROM directory for you with a whole bunch of folders in it. There are two folders in there, one named Desktop and one named Steam. You just need to copy the desktop shortcut of any app that you want to show up in Emulation Station and paste it into one of these folders. In my experience, Everything that I tried worked in the Steam folder, even if they weren't necessarily Steam games. Almost nothing for me worked in the desktop folder. So try the Steam folder first. And if you don't have a desktop icon for a specific game, you can just find the EXE file and create a shortcut and move that into the desktop folder that MUDEC created. I think this is great for anybody who plays a lot of ROMs. Now, you don't have to leave Emulation Station to launch your PC games. You can even set Emulation Station to launch when your computer starts. And now, from there, you have the choice to play any of your retro games or anything from your modern PC game library, which is pretty sick. There are a ton of options for launchers that I know people are gonna comment and say, why didn't you talk about this one? So I'm gonna do a rapid fire of a bunch of them that didn't quite make the cut for me. If you have a lot of GOG games, people seem to really like GOG Galaxy. You can add games from other launchers into GOG Galaxy. Epic games and Xbox games are easy to integrate by just adding your account. Steam games, though, are a bit broken. You can get them in there, but there's a little bit of work involved, and that's what kind of killed it for me. People seem to really love LaunchBox. It's been around for a really long time. It's primarily a launcher for ROM libraries, but it can scrape your PC games as well. And it does a pretty good job of doing that by default. I think it suffers from having a bit too many options and a lot of the cooler themes are locked behind a paywall. In a world where there are so many great free options, it just doesn't make much sense to me. I used a really weird one that I never really hear anybody talking about called M Galaxy. I used it on my arcade cabinet. I think I might've even paid for it. It's again, primarily for ROM libraries. You can get some pretty decent themes for it. I used one that made it look like you were in an arcade. I don't love M Galaxy, but the reason I used it and even paid for it was because the controller on my arcade cabinet is a weird protocol. It's not X input. I'm not sure what it is, but M Galaxy was the only launcher that I could find that works with my arcade cabinet by default. I also appreciated how it has four by three themes. These look a lot better on my weird aspect ratio display. I'm sort of burying the lead here, but the launcher that everybody's talking about and the one that kind of inspired this whole video is a launcher called Play Night. There is a little bit of setup involved, but it's not as much as some of the other ones that I've talked about. And once you get it set up, you can do some pretty cool stuff with it. The theme that I've been using is this Xbox style theme, which I think is the perfect fit for a Windows handheld. This is pretty much exactly what Microsoft should be doing with Windows, or at the very least, with the Xbox app on Windows. We want a console-like experience in Windows. Is that so hard to give us? I've also been using a Nintendo Switch theme, but we'll get to that too. Play Night has a ton of options, and by default, I admittedly didn't like it that much. Installing it is relatively easy. Once it's set up, it'll automatically show you your PC games, but it doesn't let you navigate it with a controller. Switching to full screen mode miraculously enables controller support. To set this as default, go to settings and check launch in full screen mode, then click save. And this looks just fine and works just fine, but it's not better than just Steam in big picture mode or even Armory Crate, the one that comes with the ASUS ROG Ally. The real fun, is when you're out of full screen mode 
and you go to add-ons and check out the themes for the full screen mode that are available. I downloaded a bunch. PS5 Reborn makes it look like a PlayStation 5 home screen. Why you would ever want this home screen willingly, I have no idea, but it does a good job of mimicking a PS5. Maybe a little bit too good of a job. Hero is just sort of a basic light theme. Aniki Light is another basic light theme that shows the games a little better with logos above them. But by far my favorite is Xbox Reborn. There are additional settings like show background image on the main screen to make it a little bit more authentic. There are also some add-ons that'll do things like play sounds. Some themes even scrape trailers for games. It's pretty interesting to have trailers for games that you've already purchased, but it does help make it feel more like an official storefront than just a launcher. I wasn't really a big fan of the Xbox boot logo that comes with this theme. I get that this is trying to be like an Xbox, but it's, it's not an Xbox. I found out that you can fairly easily find the folder that the MP4 files are residing in, and you can just put any MP4 there. I found a couple of boot animations for Steam Deck that you can convert to MP4, and then they work just fine here. I ended up with this non-obtrusive Steam one. The only other customization I did for Play Night was I added Emulation Station to the loader. You can add all of your ROMs or individual ROMs or groups of ROMs grouped by system within Play Night, but I prefer to have all of my ROMs hiding behind just one app. I think that's a lot cleaner. When you add an app, it lets you search Google Images for box art, and it's very easy. And look at that. I think a retro game core thumbnail would look just fine here. So this right here is my favorite front end experience so far. It's got the right mix of plug and play and customization. But most of all, it just looks nice. It looks just like what I want Microsoft to do when they inevitably make their own gaming front end. You know, I was finished with this video and I uploaded it and everything, and I was actually writing the tweet for this video explaining how I've been using the Xbox theme when I thought to myself, why haven't I been using a Nintendo Switch theme? Why stop at Xbox? There's got to be a nice, simple Nintendo Switch themed one. I feel like people would be more interested in that. So I pulled everything down, got home, went to the GitHub for Nintendo Switch-ish, and I couldn't figure out how to use that, but uh, it was just there in the theme browser on Play Night. And it installed just like the other ones. What, did I miss it? I don't understand. Anyway, the only modifications I did to this was I removed the background image that I had on from the Xbox theme. I turned off the background music because that's annoying. And I had to make the icons square. And that's the only setting that you have to change outside of full screen mode. You have to do that in the settings of desktop mode. All of these were very simple to do. It was very easy. This is probably the one that I like the most. I gas up that Xbox theme a lot because I think it's very fitting for a Windows handheld, but this is just the simplest. This is what I like from Emulation Station. I just like a nice, clean, big icon launcher where all the stuff is there in one big line. And who doesn't love a Nintendo Switch? Now this thing looks like a Nintendo Switch. Isn't that cool? To recap, I think the absolute easiest front end to use on any Windows handheld is just Steam in big picture mode. If you have an Asus ROG ally of any kind, the Armory Crate is kind of just fine. If you're an emulation guy, just add your desktop shortcuts over to Emulation Station and launch your games that way. If you want a little bit more customization, check out Play Night. I think that's the best way to get a console-like experience on your Windows handheld if you're willing to mess around just a little bit. Adding any front end to your PC handheld will get it just that much closer to a console-like experience, but it will always have Windows underneath, which is both a blessing and a curse. On my ROG Ally X, I've installed Bazite, which I still use for most of my games. Bazite is as close to a Steam Deck-like experience that you can get, and it's dual booted, so there's both the Bazite Linux operating system and also Windows, this is kind of the best navigation experience, but goes a little outside the scope of this video. So for that, go watch that Bazite video that I did a bit ago. So what do you guys think about my front end? The front ends that I put on my PC handle. What did I miss? Because I know you guys are gonna tell me. Leave in the comments below, at me on Twitter, any and all of this other social media garbage, and blue sky. 
I messed around with a lot of this on twitch.tv slash wolf then where people gave me suggestions and you can too if you go over there and I'm live. Make sure you're subscribed to this channel, please, if you like these videos and share this video with a friend, somebody who's got one of these PC handhelds and you want to give them a little bit of an easier experience with it. Thank you very much. Have yourself a good week. Thank you, Best Buy, for sponsoring the video. Don't forget to check out their doorbusters all time till the holidays.